What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Connor Speed 6 Today, as you can see, we are back in F1 2021. Again, thanks to EA Game Changers Network uh, for the early access to this game so I can get you guys content early to help you get more familiar with the game that you've just bought. What we're gonna be doing today is talking about the Logitech G920 and the G29, which are very similar wheels, of course, one is on Xbox and one is a PC wheel. I do have the Logitech G920 in front of me. So what we're gonna do is take a look at some of the settings that I have uh, found that worked best for me. I did about an hour and a half of testing and adjusting, and I think I've got a pretty good setup that is going to help you race better on the Logitech G920 and G29 in F1 2021. Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like, leave me a positive comment down below, and if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe for more weekly content like this. Again, a huge thank you to EA and Codemasters for early access to this amazing game. If you haven't pre-ordered, go ahead and do so now. There is a link down in the description below. People who purchase Ultimate Edition will have early access beginning the 13th of July. Everyone else will have access to the game on July 16th. Now let's jump right into the settings. So on your home screen, as soon as you load the game up, uh, you will see some options down at the very bottom. You simply want to click game options and then the top option in the options menu, which is settings. Now from there, there's going to be all sorts of things that you can adjust, such as assist, your graphics, your audio settings, and things like that. We want to look at the controls, vibration, and force feedback. Now they have all sorts of different presets in the game already. As you can see, we've got everything from keyboards to Xbox controllers to Fanatec wheels, club sports thrustmasters, etc. Uh, we are going to be again using the Logitech G920. I do have a custom preset already saved and we're going to go through that right now. Now as for the bindings, these are really just up to you and player specific. Uh, there are a number of different things that you can do in the way of binding each one of the different options on your wheel depending on what sort of wheel you have and things like that. So I will leave these all up to you. Uh, I just have the standard, of course, accelerator is the accelerator, brake pedals, the brake pedal, etc. The only thing that I did adjust here, uh, because I'm actually not a pro at this game, I'm fairly new to it. I actually have the pit limiter and a couple other things such as the clutch at start sort of already assisted. Uh, so some of those things just aren't needed to be binded. So what I did is I actually just adjusted the multifunction display, which we will see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen during a race, uh, to the A button, the DRS activation to the Y button, and look back as the B button because that is the closest to my right thumb while driving and will give me the option to actually look back. We do have a rear view mirror sort of at the top of the screen, but it's always nice to just be able to look back every once in a while if you need to. Now, something else we're going to talk about in just a few minutes here is the brake pedal. Now, a lot of people, from what I've heard, actually prefer to have the clutch set as their brake pedal on the Logitech G920s because the brake pedal is very, very testy and super, super sensitive on the G920s. For that very reason, what I personally have been doing is simply turning ABS on. I know it probably makes me a little bit slower on braking, but it makes my experience using the wheel that much better and a little bit more easy because this game is so fast and every single decision you make while on track can make or break your race, not just your lap or that corner, your entire race. So I've chosen to simply just have the brake pedal as the brake pedal on the G920 because you do have the accelerator, brake pedal, clutch. I just use the standard brake pedal layout for the braking option. Now going into calibration of the wheel, this isn't actually calibrating the wheel. What it's doing is allowing you to fine tune some of the things that makes your driving experience a little bit more immersive and realistic or a little bit easier to handle. So we'll go down the list here as you see them on the screen. The steering dead zone is very, very simply the amount of rotation from the top of the wheel left or right before there is actually input detected in the game. If I adjust it to a five dead zone, it'd probably take until about here uh, for the game to actually start registering that I'm turning the wheel. So what I've done is I've actually kept that at zero. And instead of adjusting the dead zone a little bit, 
what I've done is adjusted the steering linearity up to 15. So what that does is that actually lessens the sensitivity for the smaller motions on the wheel until you actually get the wheel turning. Simple adjustments like this when you're on a straight without the linearity adjusted will make your car very twitchy and you'll be going back and forth a lot and it'll be very difficult to keep the car straight. What I've done is I've adjusted linearity up a little bit to 15 so there's less sensitivity on the smaller movements of the wheel but then it gets a little bit more sensitive as you continue to turn the wheel so the car actually does a little bit better on turn in. The steering saturation, that again just makes the wheel a little bit more or less sensitive overall. So if you adjust the saturation up any, it's going to make any little adjustment a little bit more sensitive uh, than it would be without any. Now going down to throttle dead zone. I have this at five only because it's very common and very easy uh, for someone to have the accelerator depressed a little bit while you're kind of rolling through a corner. Uh, what that does is that could actually screw you up really bad on corner exit and make the car understeer a little bit because you're still sort of in that throttle. So it gives you just a little leeway in case you leave your foot depressed a little bit on the accelerator. Because uh, without it, uh, a few times I was catching myself full, full lock on the wheel, uh, but still sort of pushing through the corner when I knew I should have been making the corner pretty easily. And I did notice, of course, that my RPMs were still uh, moving in the upward direction. So I've adjusted mine to five. You may need to adjust yours just a little bit more or a little bit less even uh, if you're a person that simply maybe slides your foot off the pedal all the way. However, I don't really recommend that because in this game, like I said, it's extremely fast. So you need to have very quick motions, uh, especially on and off the throttle and brake. Now the throttle linearity, as it was with steering linearity, it simply means the higher the number, the less sensitivity you will have at the lower uh, compression of the actual pedal itself. And as you push it down more and more and more, it does get a little bit more sensitive all the way to the floor. So I've set mine at 20. The reason for this is because it allows me more control uh, over acceleration when I'm sort of feathering the throttle out of a corner. Uh, because if it were a little bit more sensitive, your lower gear, higher RPMs, of course, uh, that would just spin the car around almost every time. Uh, so this allows you a little bit more freedom uh, to sort of put your foot in a little bit more than normal. Throttle saturation, the same with steering saturation. I didn't adjust that any because I don't want it more sensitive. Uh, I wanted it a little bit less, of course. Uh, so that's why I've adjusted the linearity up to 20 and left saturation at zero. Now the brake dead zone, again, similar to the throttle dead zone because I sort of have my foot almost covering the brake at all times. And naturally when we do that, the weight of the foot sort of compresses the brake pedal a little bit. Uh, so having the dead zone there helps you to not literally be riding the brake in the car. It actually gives you a little bit of leeway, a little bit of compression on the pedal to where it doesn't engage until a certain point. Braking linearity, this is actually really, really important and you may need to adjust this depending on, on how finessed your braking foot is. Uh, I only have mine set to 10, again, because I am using ABS. But adjusting the linearity up a little bit, again, what that does is that makes the lower decompression less sensitive, but then the more you push it down, the faster it becomes sensitive and more compressed. Again, this is a big issue on the G920, so you wanna make sure to really dial in that brake pedal. But what I've noticed, especially using ABS, is having mine set at 10 has seemed to work for me a little bit. It allows me to sort of get on the brakes without really, really digging in early. You know, that way I'm not out braking myself really or uh, braking too early uh, for the corner turn in. So for me, it's a 10. For you, could be maybe a 15, maybe even a five. Maybe you just don't need it. Uh, that's completely up to you. But for me, I found that a 10 works the best. Brake saturation, I did not adjust that up any because again, the Logitech G920 is very, very sensitive. Unless you do have the mod, which you can look up uh, anywhere on YouTube to search Logitech G920 brake mod, that can help you, of course, not just de you know compress the pedal all the way to the floor and lock up all the time. Uh, but without that, of course, keep your saturation at zero, adjust your dead zone and linearity a little bit uh, to your liking, of course. And I would recommend using ABS. It's just me. I know it's not, you know, eSports type of uh, driving and, and, and things like that and full sim, but you know, I play this because I like to play it and it's enjoyable. And I hope you guys do the same thing. 
and these are simply the best settings uh, for that in my opinion. Okay, so jumping out of the calibration into the vibration and force feedback. So your vibration and force feedback is the amount of, you know, basically resistance the wheel is giving you through your hands and your arms and your shoulders. You do of course want to feel that when playing these games, especially on the wheel, so make sure and have that turned on. The game has this preset at about 75, if I remember correctly. I did lower it to 60 because the Logitech G920 is a bit loud, so you do have a lot of chatter in that feedback at times. So I did tone mine down a little bit as well as some of the others we'll look at. So the on-track effects, it's literally what it is. The feel of the track beneath the car through the wheel itself. Every racetrack has you know, a different type of surface uh, and different bumps and things like that. So what I've done is I simply adjusted that a little bit just based on what I was feeling on straights while I was testing this. The straights are actually a really good place to, to test something like this because your car is going extremely fast, probably upwards of 180 to 200 miles per hour, depending on the track or higher. Uh, so that's actually a really good way uh, to test the feel of the on-track effect. So I have mine adjusted to about 10. It's not too much. It's not too little uh, because some of the other things actually uh, sort of outweigh the importance of the feel of on-track effects. Now the rumble strip effects. I have this turned up to 20 uh, because the feel of a rumble strip, in my opinion, is, is extremely important, especially on, on corner exit or current corner entry, like under braking. Uh, you really, really want to be able to feel that because that's going to kind of tell you where the limits of the track are. If you're feeling that rumble strip throughout the wheel or through the wheel in a corner, you know that you are basically on a limit. You may need to let off. You may need to actually blip the throttle just a little bit to get yourself onto the apex a little bit better of the corner. Uh, so I have that turned up just a little bit more than the on-track effects because in my opinion, it's a little bit more important. Now the off-track effects, not really a big issue for me. I sort of left it where it is because I don't honestly plan on driving into the gravel or into the grass. It's inevitable and will happen. However, the feel of that through the wheel is not important to me really. Uh, if I'm feeling that at any given point, I'm gonna most likely be in a barrier or uh, stuck in a gravel trap or something like that. So it's really not that important. It does have a good enough feel right around 20. Uh, you can definitely feel uh, the pull of the grass and of course the thickness of the gravel and things like that. Now the wheel damper setting, I have this at 10. I did adjust it a little bit higher and it was almost too much in my opinion for me. These cars, are so grippy that you know they're they're pulling 13 G's if I remember correctly please correct me if I'm wrong I'm probably just spewing out BS uh, but they are pulling super high G's uh, around certain corners so if you have this set a little bit too high you will again be feeling a lot of that back and forth and hearing a lot of the chatter from the G920 especially uh, so I have mine set at 10 uh, you you still have a really really good feel and a connection with the tires and the ground underneath of you But in my opinion anything much more than 10 I'd probably say 20 and higher is a little bit too much uh, But you can adjust it of course depending on what you like the best uh, How much of that you want to feel of course underneath of the car while you're driving now the understeer enhance I've actually never seen this on a game before I left it on the reason being when you are going into the corner with these super high grip cars at times they can be very understeery depending on you know how late you're on the brakes uh, if you again are on that accelerator a little bit too early the car definitely wants to push so what this does is this actually tells the wheel uh, to tell you the driver when your car is basically past that point of okay i can turn all the way through the corner and it's telling you hey i'm turned in however the car itself is not rotating through the corner we're just sort of pushing the car through so i i left that on it actually feels really really good too not only can you see that you're understeering but you can really feel when the car is 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 in an understeer pattern uh, so that's that's definitely something i would recommend having turned on again i've never seen it in a game before uh, i'd be curious to know if you guys have uh, but I like it, and I think it's a really good addition, uh, especially since I've never seen it. I like the feel of it. I think it makes it feel a little bit more realistic as well. Now, the maximum wheel rotation, it's pretty much the last setting. If I remember correctly, a Formula One race car probably has anywhere from like a 180 to a 220 degree rotation on just a general track. You know, of course, that's a full half rotation or just a little bit more. When they're on Monaco, of course, that wheel rotation could probably be anywhere from 
220 to 270, uh, 270 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure, of course, of those numbers, but the game defaults to 360 degree rotation. I lowered it down to 270 because 360, there was a lot, there was way too much movement for your, your car was really feeling tight. So I lowered it to 270 and then made my adjustments on the steering linearity and things like that. Uh, to make sure that 270 wasn't too tight and too uh, sensitive. Uh, so 270 degree wheel rotation for me is good because it allows me to get to 180 and just pass and you can still kind of hook your thumb, which you can you can kind of see right there. You sort of hook your thumb if you need to make a super tight corner, uh, such as Monaco. But yeah, 270 degrees is my preferred wheel rotation for this particular game. Other games, it's definitely higher up to uh, up to 540 degrees really so so that's where i personally like it again you may want to make adjustments here and there me being me i always prefer to have mine to like the actual you know 90 180 360 you know 270 360 etc that's just me and my ocd but 270 works great i would recommend at least trying it out and if you don't like it if it's maybe feels a little bit too tight and too sensitive adjust your steering linearity just a little bit and maybe get a little dead zone uh, bump in there as well up to maybe five just to test that to see if that doesn't work bump it up a little bit you can take it to 360 if you want even 300 just see what it feels like again i would definitely recommend at least taking a look at these options and then making adjustments as it pertains to you and your driving style and your wheel of course the g29 could be a little bit different than the g920 and may have different options because it's a pc wheel uh, but I like the, the feel of this so far. I put in about an hour of just lapping uh, around Australia and Melbourne, and uh, I feel pretty good. Uh, it's kind of new to me because I'm new to the game, but it does feel really good overall. I really hope this helps you guys, especially uh, since this is a brand new title out for you. Most of you have probably played an F1 game in the past, uh, but F1 2021 is feeling great it looks fantastic the graphics are wonderful so i really recommend you jump on this game if you haven't already i also recommend leaving the video a like leaving me a positive comment down below and subscribing to the channel for more weekly content like this thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you on the track until next time i am connor speed six much love everyone see you soon